Hi, welcome to Range and Country. I'm Peter. And I'm Lawrence. And we're here today to be, bring you the results of a bit of sibling rivalry that comes out of Staffordshire yep. in the form of a Daystate and a Brocock. Basically the same rifle, but come from a different ethos and they're made in a completely different way. So This is born in one end of the factory and that's born in the other end, isn't it? Exactly. So yeah, we're going to find out which one comes out on top. Let's get into it. So here we are, in reality, we're talking about the BRK or Brocock Ghost, which we've re reviewed before, haven't we, Lawrence? Yeah. And we're talking about the Daystate Alpha Wolf, both in the blue, rather sexy special edition here, and the beautiful red laminate that's probably the most popular one that we sell, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's their sort of standard, standard yeah. version. Yeah. Yeah. Now, these share quite a few common things, don't they? Yeah. Commonalities. Now, obviously, these are the laminate stocks, so they're a sort of one-piece stock. So you imagine the sort of ghost would be the same with all of this. But they are basically the same rifle. It's basically the same monoblock here. Uh, it's the same regulator inside up front here. It's obviously the same bottle. The barrels are basically the same. That has just a built-in uh, chronograph, but otherwise they're basically the same. So in a way, to look at them, they look very, very, very similar. But there are a few important differences um, and a few important uh, tweaks between the two sort of thing. So yeah. they're both tactical rifles. Obviously, the, the Alpha's dressed up a bit sexier sort of thing. They've both got interchangeable barrels here. A single screw takes them both out. They're both exactly the same magazine, 13 round in 177 and 11 in 22, that you can dual 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 it dual wheel dual entry into the mob. magazine well yeah yeah um so <clears throat> it's 26 or 22 yeah it's numbers um they've both got adjustable powers they've both got uh tactical weaver rails and up top and on the side you can get accessories for them both you can chop and change quite a bit on both the they're both fully ambidextrous You've got a cocking lever on the right on both of them as standard, and obviously you can flip that onto the left on both of them as well. As we said, they're both regulated and they're both the same reg. But that's possibly about as far as, yeah, as, far as so, the similarities so go. The difference is, I mean, the Ghost is what we call fully mechanical, isn't it? Yeah, it's the standard. No control. electronic parts on it, on it whatsoever. So when you're bringing that cocking lever back, you're bringing back a hammer, and as as you lock that back, that locks into the sears. So standard trigger sears, standard hammer. Now on this beauty, when you bring that cocking lever back, all that does is flick a little micro switch because we're fully electronic. So it flicks the micro switch, brings the pellet probe back, indexes the pellet, pushes forward. The micro switch tells the computer that it's, it's cocked and it's loaded cocked and ready to go pellet. again ready to be fired. Now, the trigger is also, it's very clever, a micro switch. Yeah. So that is, I I think they're almost sublime, the electronic triggers. Yeah, I think the electronic triggers are everything that a mechanical tri trigger tries to tries be. Tries to be, yeah. 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 The, some people say there's a lack of feel in them. There's a lack of first and second stage. I think that first shot that you take when you get an electronic trigger, you're probably right. Yeah, they're very, very, they're very light. Yeah. But I'm coming from uh, sort of, we've we've had the practice of them, we've got used to them sort of thing. Yeah. After a magazine full, I think you're, read, you're, you're used to the trigger, aren't you? Yeah. And it grows on you and you, and you learn it basically, don't you? You, yeah. you sort of grow with it. Yeah. I think, I mean, I've got, I go on about this quite regularly when we're doing our, our shooting. And I always say, it's always that last split second of your trigger pull that determines where you're, you know, how accurate that, that shot is actually going to be. Yeah. And it's so easy with a mechanical trigger, especially one that's a little bit heavy, to pull that gun off centre at that very last crucial second, split second. Yeah. But with a switch, a lot of the time, it takes you by surprise. You're pulling and you're pulling. 
something's gone. And you go, oh, it's gone. And you go, oh, bullseye. As long as you were holding it in the right place, yeah. When you release it, that's yeah. going to be that's going to be in the same the same hole. Yeah. That to, to, I mean, to me, the the electronic triggers are a sublime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They certainly are. One thing I will just say, very very slight thing that um, even I didn't notice until we've shot them back to back. Okay, is the length of pull for the cocking lever. It sounds so stupid, but it makes such a difference that you just wouldn't know unless you handled them both in the flesh. So I measured it. So the different, the distance from here to right at the back for here is longer on the Ghost than it is from here to here on the Alpha. By a good, uh, it was half an inch closer at the back, it was three quarters of an inch further, so a good inch and a quarter. So you've got to pull that lever back an inch and a quarter further on the ghost than you have on the alpha. You need a bit, little because that's actually doing something. You need a little bit more leverage. So yeah, I think your your leaves a little bit longer, isn't it, to make your your effort a little bit less required. Yeah, but because this is doing nothing, only drawing your pellet probe back and flicking that micro switch, it doesn't really matter, does it? How yeah. long it is? What that what that translates to when you're actually shooting is on the ghost. You you're taking your hand away and you're pulling it all the way back, all the way forward. On the alpha, you can just lift your finger up, flick it back and forward. Mm. That's a really tiny little detail, um, but I think that makes quite a big difference. Mm. Yeah, I'd agree. So that's trigger, that's loading system. Yeah. Now, this has also got a built-in computer, hasn't it? Yeah. They're both regulated, both humor regulated. Now, this has... Uh, a pressure sensor as well, doesn't it? Yeah. And this will, it's pre-programmed with, um, so, so its curve is pre-programmed in so that it regulates the, the the energy, the force that it gives to the pellet, to, to the hammer going forward to, to open the valve. Right, yeah. So, so instead of it being a spring that fires a, a physical hammer forward each time. It's a little solenoid that opens and closes yeah. each time. So it's a lot easier to regulate every single shot, it even is. after the regulator. It should be faster as well. Yeah. To be, so fa sort of faster lock time with the, getting the pellet out the barrel from pulling the trigger. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so there's, there's not so many moving parts, but it does regulate. So as the pressure drops, it, it will just, increase the time that it's pushing air through yeah to yeah. to put behind the pellet basically well it works with the regulator yeah so you've got the electronics and the reg yeah whereas obviously you've only got the reg on this yeah but they're very clever the, the program in these is very clever and if you want to get into it there there is quite a bit of program that can be done isn't there yeah yeah Less so on the sub 12 foot pound versions over like a high power FAC version, firearms license required one. But still on the sub 12, you've got quite a lot of adjustment on it. You can turn it down in percentages so you know exactly how much power you're putting out and it's very repeatable every single time. Mm. That's a bit of a similarity to the Ghost, except it's a physical hammer wheel, uh, hammer spring wheel on the back here. So you've got, I think it's 19 different settings, or is it 20? It's 20 because it's min and then max. Yeah. Um, so you can adjust that on the fly to turn your power down or up. Well, turn your power down from maximum sort of thing. Just a reminder though, it will zero to different points of impact yeah. at different powers. So it's not something that you could, uh, just going into a barn, drop your power down, it's going to shoot the same. It You'd have to flick that down. You would, yeah. What you'd probably do is, well, this will come into the next point, actually, if we're ready to move on. So what you'd probably do is, if you had an adjustable power, you'd have a preset in your scope. So if you're, well, I'm talking specifically if you've got like a night vision scope, electronic day and night scope with multiple zeroing options, you could have one for your full power, you could have one for your medium power, one for your low power. That comes into our next point, which is a sort of difference between the two. 
This is obviously mechanical. The only thing you've got to put into it is some air into the bottle. The alpha, you've got to do the same, but also you've got to keep the battery at the back charged. So there's a little LiPo battery inside here. That's, that's one of the drawbacks, isn't it, of electronics? But it does tell you, as soon as you turn it on, and it, and it keeps updating as, as you're shooting, your power level. Yeah, it's that battery there. Yeah. The power 100% is the energy that's it. gun. Yeah. yeah. So on that little icon there, you, you, you've got 100% at the top when it's full. And it will drop down yeah. in increments. So what once it gets to just less less than half charge, just top it up. Yeah. Yeah. Coming back to my point on the on if you have like an electronic day and night scope, is what you tend to do is before you go out, you're obviously going to check the charge in your scope. Well, at the same time, you just check the charge in your rifle as well. Yeah. yeah. So it's is a little bit of a difference. It's just one more thing. Yeah, sure. But you can do it at the same time as you charge your scope up, that sort of thing, before you go out. Bit of a drawback, relying on the battery power. Yeah. Yes. But it's well worth it, I think. Exactly. Yeah. Obviously, we've talked about the trigger. It's everything that mechanical tr trigger tries to be. Yeah. And the electronics in there. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah, you're, you're right. It's... Uh... I know. I usually am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, it's, it's, it's a bit of a drawback, but it's such a plus, that drawback is negated, I, I feel, yeah. to, to me anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So what are the differences we've got? Further to, my, further to my point of something small and niggling that you wouldn't notice until you come to shoot it is um, the rear section here. So we've got a very short uh, butt plate sort of adapter section on this one, whereas the Alpha Wolf is more a traditional rifle and it has all of that. What that means when you're actually shooting it is, um, and obviously we'll come to that when we when we shoot it, um, when it's up in the shoulder you've only got that little tiny little section to hold on to or to put on the bench to rest. So it can be a lot floatier and a lot harder to keep it stable than an Alpha Wolf or a more traditional rifle. There are quite a few accessories available though, aren't they, from PRS? Yeah. Uh, which change that and give you different butt pad options. Yes, so you can spend your four your four figures for your rifle, but then also spend extra for the bag rider that goes on the back. Accessorize. Yeah. What other differences have we got? You said the barrels are interchangeable. Yeah. Now the barrels are different, aren't they? Because the 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 alphas and the deltas come with a built-in chronograph. The barrels the barrel. are the same, but the shroud is different. So inside here is, well, it's just a sleeve of carbon over the barrel. That is the same, but you've got a built-in chronograph, a little electronic device, a little light gate that measures the speed of the pellet as it comes out the barrel. Do you need that? This rifle relies on it, so this rifle needs it. True. The downside of that, well, the upside is you get a chronograph built into the rifle and it tells you exactly the power every single time. Now, when we check our rifles in the shop before we dispatch, um, we often check that, don't we? That yeah. display against our scan chrono, which self-calibrates every time you turn it on. And it's very good. Yeah. It's max probably three or four feet per second difference to our scan. Yeah, but it's always the same. So it's just, it's just a yeah. seconds and stuff. Yeah. So it, it is very accurate. You, you can trust it. Yeah. But the point of what we were getting at here is the problem is the problem with that difference problem with the chrono is the barrels are a lot more expensive on the Alpha Wolf than they are for the Ghost. So if you wanted to buy a rifle, a 177 rifle and you wanted the 22 barrel, I think these are around the 400 quid mark, 450, something like that for a barrel kit. I thought they were a bit cheaper than that. Are they? Might be wrong, something like that. Three, three to four, something like that. Yeah. Whereas they're seven fifty. That's a massive difference. Like <clears throat> you could buy account. two of those for that. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking about the chronograph. Let's just touch on something else. One of the cons of it. Now it can get dirty, can't it? Um. Yes. Yes. So S sort of. Yes. Yeah. Carry on. So it does need cleaning every now and then if it starts giving erratic results. Yes. They've been. 
Uh, when they first came out, they were a bit more of a problem for it. I don't know whether that's because they're different uh, grease or something in the factory. Um, but yes, these they can do. They can give you erratic readings after a few thousand shots. Yeah, so it's a lot. When you clean the barrel, I would clean the chrono as well. Now that being said, I've got one of these at home, um, and after a thousand, it's four tins of pellets, twelve hundred shots. Um, I've not cleaned it and it's not been an issue. So I know a lot of people that don't have problems, but if you do, that might be a common, that might be a cause and it's an easy fix. Yeah. I think you see the cotton bud or a nine millimeter pistol rod, isn't it? Yeah. Wool. wool, wool. Yeah, a little pipe cleaner or something. Yeah. Like and it's just to clean the, the lead fouling really off it, isn't it? Or the, yeah. or the, the, the grease off the, that's come out the barrel. Yeah. Small price to pay, I think. Yeah, nice little addition to have. Yeah. Okay, what else have we got? I mean, there's the basics <coughs> of the similarities that we, that we sort of glossed over that we've got to mention. They both come in a hard case, nice uh, contoured hard case where you can fit the scope in and the silencer. Proper Negrini hard case. Yeah. Yeah, really nice bit of kit. Yeah. yeah. And we also give a lifetime warranty with all day states and brococks. So that's all of these. If you buy one from us, as long as you don't mess about with it, you'll be sorted for life. If yeah. it starts leaking in 10 years, we'll fix it for you free. Yeah. Um, are we ready for shooting? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm checking our little cheat sheet notes behind the camera there, and I, I think we've about got through everything. I think we have. I think we've, we've yeah. We've, everything's just about been touched on, hasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see, see what we can do. Let's see what you can do. Let's see how well they shoot. Yeah. Now, we've told everybody how good these rifles are, Lawrence. We really need to prove the point, don't we? The proof will be in the pellets. In the holes in the target. Yeah. So there's not much pressure. Two high-end guns. I'm going to try and do it back to back in one take as well. But that might be a bit of an ask. This should be interesting. We've got three quarter tin of pellets, so we should be all right today. Now, notice there you had your finger right down at the bottom of the trigger blade, not in the middle of the shoe. Mm. I know why you're doing that. You're going for more leverage, aren't you? Yeah. Because it's. Uh, I know you said earlier it's a little bit, because it's a mechanical trigger, it's a little bit heavier. So I think if that was your, your own gun, you would move the shoe further down to... <clears throat> you'd probably lighten well, you, it as well, wouldn't you? Yeah, or you'd twist it. Yeah, yeah. So the pressure's rising with every single shot now. Pressure? No, not much pressure. Could be worse, you could be a politician at this time. <laughs> you really are taking your time with these shots, aren't you? Yeah. I'm doing my very, very best. A lot of people will say I'm cheating by using a rear rest. It's probably one of the only times that I actually do. Mm. It's the thing you find with these short guns, though, I find. You have to, it's a lot of practice to keep them stable. Now, for anybody who's not a regular watcher, and I don't know why you wouldn't be, you should be, um, we're shooting on a 25 meter indoor tube range, which we built. Yeah, we're using, uh, I'm using Air Arms Diabler Field 8.4 grain, which is 177. Um, yeah. In theory, indoor and windowless. Let's see how good you your score is. 
I might have to make up some excuses. My excuse for this week is I'm losing the reticle. Oh, yeah. Let's go for that. So what we've got is this the helix, yeah. So this is the element helix, uh, and this scope in the centre, instead of having crosshairs, is just a dot. And at this range with this zoom, with 177 pellets, it is the size of the dot. Okay. So after my first one, I am sort of putting it where I think. This is a new one on me. I, I haven't heard this one before, to be honest. It's another one for your uh, book of excuses on, on the range. So uh, if you've got your little notebooks handy, taking notes. So we don't have a we don't have favourite scopes. We uh, We've got a few in the studio here. We've got some Hawks, we've got some MTCs, we've got an Element Helix here. And it's just whatever amounts we've got on the scopes and pop it on, see how we get on. Not very scientific. So I've got a monitor here that I can watch his, uh, we've got a camera on the, because it's a tube range, we've got a Cat6 cable all the way down to the camera that's on the, uh, on the video in the target holder. We run Cat6 all the way back up to here, up to the studio. We've got a monitor here, so I can see exactly what he's what he's seeing through his scope, basically, and exactly what you're seeing on your on on the telly. So I think that was nine shots. I've got four left in my magazine. It's a total of thirteen. So I think I've got. Ten, I think this will be my tenth. You meant to say, are you feeling lucky, punk? Before you say that. But you're probably a bit young for that, aren't you? Dirty Harry. My name's Lawrence. That's 10, and it ain't making the hole any bigger. Okay. Are we going to try to do it in a one take? We can try. Reload me mag. Yep. Now, I can see how well it's concentrating because he's left condensation on the cheek piece. That is, uh, that is how hard he was concentrating on that. At least it's not sweat. <laughs> no. See, that's, the, that's one of the problems with the sort of tactical rifles, where they've got like bits of plastic and they're, and they're and metal and stuff. Um, in the winter, they get cold. Mm, true, yeah. And then obviously when you when you breathe on them, when your cheek's there, yeah. you see the condensation. Your cheek doesn't stick to it though in the winter like that, does it? Like... Right, let's give it a go, wake you up. So the beauty of the Alpha, we've discussed already, it ha it's fully electronic. So the trigger is just a switch. So it hasn't got to put much pressure on it to break sears. All he has to do is put enough pressure to operate that little micro switch in there. Which you don't get as much feedback through the trigger, so you, you can't feel really your positive first and second stage, can you? Not with an electronic trigger. Yes. Do you think? But uh, also, can we, can we just talk about before I continue? What? That one and done. Which one? Thank you very much. On the right hand target. Oh, was that you? Yeah. Oh. Well, you haven't walked up to it with a pen and poked it out, have you? I, I might have done. That might have been when I was using. Well, did I miss completely? <laughs> no, I was. I was. I was blanking over that one. You did very well, son. Um, yes. No. First and second stage. I. We've obviously been dealing with the electronic guns and electronic triggers for yeah. quite a few years now. Um, You've got to be very light with it, yeah. But yeah. it is everything that a mechanical trigger tries to be. Yeah, it takes a lot of people by surprise, though, especially the first time they use one. Yeah, it does. Oh, 
I always think when it takes you by surprise, it's it's often your most accurate shot. What happened there? I don't know. You didn't take long with that shot. Was that was that you getting a little bit cocky? Maybe. Maybe it was one that was, yeah. Was the wind gusting? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I think you took a, you were a bit quick on that shot. I think it maybe was, yeah. Like I say, maybe getting a bit cocky. Yeah, easy done. I can see my heartbeat lifting it Let's up. Go. Yeah. Like this. When you're on that vein in your shoulder. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's just timing it right, isn't it, on that uh, on that beat. Eight, I think. I think the concentration's getting to him. A bit of pressure here. We've only got two left. Can we call it that? Can we call it done? No. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are saying, I guess, 25 yards, two and a half grand gun. It should be the same hole. But you're not here with millions of people watching all over the world millions and the pressure is on. Let's not kid ourselves here. Well, the, okay, Some amount of people watching. There's six people watching, okay. So. Yeah, the, the pressure behind here, the, the pressure really is on. And this is, this is normal life, isn't it? This is what happens. You, you get a stray shot. Not not everything is bang on. Yeah, I mean every pellet apart from yeah every pellet was going exactly where my crosshairs landed as the mm. as the tri as rifle fire. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's not. It's I've got them supported front and rear. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sort of. It's not locked in the vice. It's it's me a human shooting it. They both shot very well. This is this is much easier to shoot. Yeah, because of the electronics. Because the electronic trigger. Yeah. Um, it's also, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, that is so much easier. It doesn't seem, it seems trivial, but when you're up in the, in the, in the aim position, you can just flick that. And that's purely because that, there's nothing mechanical there apart from that linkage operating that switch. Exactly. And yeah. also it's the shorter throw. Yeah. Not you really. haven't got that hammer to draw back to catch on the sears. It's a switch. You've got to reset that switch. I mean, really, a button would work, wouldn't it? I don't know if he's ever bought that, have they? Just, Just like cock a it with a button. And... I suppose you've well, got to cycle the, the pallet probe though, haven't you? Yeah, the physical yeah. probe through here has to come back to push yeah. the pallet down the barrel. That's a shame. But... Yeah. There's one for the designers. Press button. There you go. Yeah. Right, let's have a little wrap up and we'll see you in the conclusion. Yeah. So let's summarise this then, Lawrence. We've we've talked about the ghosts, we've talked about the alphas. Which one would you have? I think it would come down to if it was if I had fifteen hundred quid in my pocket, um, price dependent. Obviously, the price is correct as of fil time of filming. Um, I would go for the ghost, uh, whatever rifle it was. That's the rifle I would have at that sort of price range. If I didn't mind spending a little bit more and I wanted the same thing but better, personally, I'd go for an alpha wolf. I personally prefer the blue. I think it's the sexiest. I'm a sucker for blue. The red is very, very nice as well. I don't know how it, how well it's going to come across in the photos. Or obviously they do the Delta Wolf, which is the sort of tactical version. Looks like this, but it's electronic. I think that's, yeah. 
I think that, I think that sums it up. I mean, I, I would say utilitarian, sexy, bit, bit sexy, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, one thing we haven't discussed: mm -hmm. residual values. Yeah. Now, some guns plummet in value, don't they? They can do. Yeah. The Ghost and the Alpha are two that don't. They Ooh. still retain a high residual value. Yeah. If, if you've got the budget, Alpha Wolf, if you haven't got the budget or you want a, a more utilitarian gun, yeah. go for the Ghost. Certainly not, nothing wrong with that at all, is there? You know? There you go. Yeah. That's us. That, that's our opinion. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me. You, you've seen what they can do. That's us. I think that's us for today. Sums it up. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you very much for watching. Thank you. We'll see you in the next video.